I reviewed the first uh, OLED TV to hit the market in the U.S. a few years ago. That was the Sony. That was 11 inches. That was this, I saw that one introduced. It was this thin, and it was it was like a technology demonstrator. Yeah. But this LG machine is for real. Yeah. This well, you know, that's not a TV. This is a TV, you know? and, <laughs> right. and the real coolness is that you know you get this great picture quality, but you also get incredible dimensions. So LG is talking about a one millimeter bezel, which is the thinnest possible thing. So it's pretty much all picture, the most mm -hmm. compact you can get from a 55 inch TV. It's also what I'm told 7.6 kilograms. So math, math, math. Hey, I don't know how much that is, but like 17 pounds, something <laughs> like that. We do a lot of lifting televisions in and out of boxes, so that's going to help us. Just yeah. as a side note, I was at the Sharp press conference and they said one of their big focuses is going to be making their televisions lighter which I can really appreciate and you got to move yeah. these things around well I guess you know there's things like infant hazards you know for example people uh, have to attach their TV to their units so that their yeah. children don't knock them over right. So having a lighter TV, I don't know if that's more dangerous or less dangerous. Well, as a manufacturer, it's also a lot cheaper to ship those things. So everybody uh, wins. True. And that's from, true. you know, unless you're getting free shipping from Amazon, it really doesn't matter. Now, Ty, there's another new technology that's being talked about. I think it's Sony is showing this one. It's called, what is it, Crystal? Crystal Display, I believe it is. It's yeah. essentially what you see at the baseball games, you know, the huge screens that they show the, the plays on. Shrunk down into a 55 inch television. That seems to be the, the magical number this year, 55. Mm -hmm. So essentially it's little LEDs, similar to what you get behind an LCD TV, but they are actually used to display the, the, the pictures, I similar to OLED as well. So I think we need a little technology refresher here because we are sold all the time at the, at the stores, oh, this is an LED TV. Uh, Tell us the difference between an LED TV and an LED TV. Ah, so LED TVs that we know are actually, it's a marketing ploy. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's just using LEDs like you'd get uh, on the power buttons of your television, for example, mm -hmm. used to light the screen itself. Because LCD doesn't emit its own light like you got in a digital watch. Mm -hmm. You actually have to press a, a button to get the thing to display. But an LED TV is actually using those LEDs as the picture, as the pixels. So there's six million LEDs in this television, mm -hmm. uh, micro, micro uh, size, uh, and it's going to be expensive if it ever comes to market. Oh, you uh, think there's a chance it won't? Absolutely, you know, they're, they're pushing it as a prototype, which I don't think Sony has done in a long time. Yeah, this TV, it's basically a CES kind of, you know, come check us out thing. They haven't talked about marketing this thing at all. If they do, it'll be really expensive. The difference between that and the OLEDs we just mentioned is the OLEDs are actually shipping. Samsung and LG both, you know, assure us that they're going to come out with uh, these 55-inch OLED TVs by the end of the year. LG says, uh, you know, third quarter, and Samsung will probably be around then as well. Now, when um, I, I just got a new TV, and before I did, I talked to the guys at CNET about what kind of TV I should get, and they said, get a plasma set. Now, there's only one or two vendors, I think, actually making plasmas, but uh, one of those being Panasonic, and they're, they're not stepping away from this technology, is that right? Why is plasma still a, a thing at Panasonic? Well, uh, the re main reason we like uh, plasma TVs is uh, a couple of things. They have excellent screen uniformity, so they, they have the even brightness across the screen. They're also superb from off angle, so as Ty was explaining, with the LCDs, you have this backlight issue where they shine through to the LCD and it actually makes the picture be uh, less fidelity from kind the of angles. Fuzzy. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you miss out on a lot of fidelity when you sit at extreme angles. Plasma doesn't have that problem. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the couple reasons why we like them. They also have, on a lot of the high end plasmas like the Panasonics we really liked last year, they give excellent black level performance as well. So Panasonic's plasmas, again, I saw those this morning in person and they look really good. They're talking about how they've improved a lot of their picture quality aspects, deeper blacks, brighter color, and addressing one of the bugaboos of plasma, which is energy efficiency. So, you know, all of these things are, are supposedly better for the 2012 uh, Panasonic line. And I called the ST30 from last year the best value I'd ever seen, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much in terms of picture quality for the money that you're going to spend. It's an excellent bargain. Uh, and I think plasma is going to continue to occupy that niche. What, what I can see happening is that OLED's going to come up like this and plasma's going to go down like this. You'll see LCD start to fill up the lower uh, under $1,000, maybe some budget plasmas as well. But OLED's probably in 2015, 2016, uh, companies like LG are saying that it's going to be the same price as an LCD. So you think that OLED will take up the mantle as the high end where plasma Absolutely. is right now? Plasma yeah. will eventually finally make its exit? Uh, I, I think so. I think okay. it's a kind of technology that's probably on the back end of its lifespan. I mean, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, plasma is still going to give you the best picture you can buy right now without spending $8,000, which is what I think these OLEDs are going to mm -hmm. cost. Um, so that's still like a really, really high end technology. As Ty was saying, you know, they're expecting it to come down pretty fast, and there's a lot of impetus to do that. 
that because, again, you get the lighter screens, you get the smaller size, and you give people a, a, a chance to buy another TV. Now, we're looking here at uh, TVs for the next year or two, but just for the moment, uh, let's say that somebody's looking for a TV today in the sweet spot, which I guess is about 46 to 55 inches. What technology would you recommend, and what's about the price point for a really good display, good value? Um, you can get excellent values. I would say the value price point started under a thousand dollars for 50 inch uh, and up screen size. So you know that's where these uh, some of the better uh, LCD and plasmas are hovering right now. Like I was talking about with that Panasonic ST30, thousand dollars. That's actually got down to nine hundred dollars for a 50 inch that we gave an eight in performance to, which mm -hmm. is excellent and you know one of the best pictures we've seen. So that's a pretty good combination right there. But I wouldn't actually wait for this year's TVs to come out if you're. You can always wait, you know, yeah. uh, you know, in six months there's going to be another TV, it's, a, you know, it's an unending cycle. So if you're looking for a TV now, probably February when these models are going out and the ones we're going to see at this show start coming in, you're going to see really cheap TVs, really good TVs. Yeah. So I wouldn't wait for this year's technology if you need a TV right now. That's good because I just bought one and I just bought, <laughs> this was just so I didn't feel bad about it. <laughs> now, for you, Rafe. Thank you so much. Yeah. Now, um, Speaking of weird stuff that's going into TVs, uh, so we've got four different techno display technologies. We've got uh, plasma OLED, crystal LED, uh, regular old LCD. Actually, there's more than, and then there's the different ways they light that with the old tubes. I guess the tubes are gone, edge lit and back lit. Oh, that's a lot of technologies to sort out, man. Yeah, and, and manufacturers don't make it clear to consumers. They yeah. basically just say, hey, it's LED. We have a big explainer up that lists the four different types of LED backlights that are available now, oh, yeah. and that's actually a big differentiator for video files who want the best picture quality out of their LED-based LCD TVs. It's good to know the differences, but you know, there's still a lot of stuff out there, I think, because some manufacturers do thrive on that confusion. People just go, screw it, I'm going to buy you know, whatever's expensive. Hence our jobs. <laughs> Manufacturers, thank you very much for yeah. being confusing. Please keep it up so we can continue to explain things in ways they can understand it. Thank yeah. you. Uh, now, Panasonic, in addition to uh, being the holdout with plasmas, also you said they have a dual core TV? Yeah. Ta this is, this is crazy, you know, yeah. we went through the whole, dual core was the savior of computing, then it went into our phones last year, yeah. and now it's in our televisions. Next year it's going to be juicers. Next, in our juicers? Yeah. Okay. But Android juices is going to happen. Now, essentially, what, what they're trying I to do is... I wouldn't put it past them. They've tried the 3D is really amazing. They've yeah. tried the... Uh, it's got 60% more black, which doesn't yeah. really mean anything. So they're going for the technology angle they're going for. Okay, it's got a dual-core processor. But actually, what it's doing is that because there's so much technology in there, you've got a lot of different um, things like Netflix. Yep. Having a dual-core actually makes that sort of process a lot smoother. So... Do we do so? We want our, our our big displays to be basically computers. Essentially, yeah. How, how long until they we get Android TV? Well, we have Google TV. We, we do, yeah. yeah, yeah. We have and it right now. Lenovo uh, announced one a couple of days ago. Yeah, they have an, an Android, Android TV. TV. And a couple of manufacturers are still doing Google TV. LG is actually coming out with their Google TV uh, in the next couple of months. Uh, Samsung hasn't talked about Google TV, but I think they will too. Vizio even said, right. you know, they're going to push their Google TV to fall this year. So those things are out there. You know, I don't know whether or not people actually want them or enjoy them. We were just talking backstage, and it sounds like the actual apps built into the TV are not that satisfying for you, Rafe. And at the end of the day, you can I just add a Roku. You yeah. can <laughs> add a Roku, and it's fifty dollars, and you get the same thing, and and it's you know you don't have to worry about it. Uh, does anybody make a really good monitor that's just a display panel that says you can put in your signal and we're not going to junk it up with all these apps which we really don't know how to make interfaces for? The last thing that really did that was the Pioneer Kuros, what, three years ago. Yeah. They, they went for out and out picture quality, but mm -hmm. the problem was that people didn't buy it because they didn't want what was an, Austra an Australian TV, $11,000. Yeah. They didn't want to spend on, it didn't have features. They want big screen, they want cheap, and you, you can't really sell a high-end TV in this market anymore, which is a shame. Yeah, because the upgrade cycle is, mi is mixed up. I mean, the display technology that you get today will be good for another maybe five years, maybe ten. But you know if you buy a dual-core plasma display or dual-core <laughs> anything right now, that's going to be obsolete in 18 months on the outside, technologically. I mean, most of the readers that I talk to are completely unconcerned about those sorts of things. They want the picture quality mm -hmm. first and foremost. Uh, you know, it, it, all these extras that manufacturers add in are a little less relevant. I think to answer your question, you know, guys can't do it. They can't build these, uh, you know, these TVs with just the monitor only mm -hmm. because they're competing directly on a spec sheet by spec sheet basis yeah. with other manufacturers, and they all have stuff built in. So the market really isn't there. And guys, you know, if you have six one half dozen the other, and you look at two TVs, and one is a complete monitor, right. 
and you have to take the manufacturer's word for it that its picture quality is excellent, unless it's significantly less expensive, uh, there's really no impetus for that. And of course, the flip side of that is that the TVs are the expensive ones are, uh, you know, the ones that have the best picture quality. So, you know, they throw in these extra features. It doesn't cost too much to throw in uh, dual core or all that stuff into these TVs. Now, there is one vendor that we haven't talked about and aren't going to hear from here at the show when it comes to television, and that's Apple. I I <laughs> I is it possible that the reason that there are all these smart functions going into TVs is because people are trying to get out in front of Apple, and when Apple comes along and with their whatever it is television, if they do, do you think they'll kind of eat the lunch of everybody who's building apps in? I'm so sick of hearing about this Apple TV, yeah. this mythical television. Uh, the thing is, we've got an Apple TV now. It's on this show floor. It's, it's Samsung. It's LG to some extent. Mm -hmm. We've got these features now, and what we can participate, you know, imagine is going to happen in the future is happening now. Yeah. Uh, we've got it in Connect. If you've got an Xbox, you can still do those, fu those functions. So I don't think it's worth waiting for an Apple TV. Uh, you know, if you want that sort of functionality, which is still fairly beta as mm -hmm. far as, you know, uh, being able to be sold in the, the, work, the marketplace, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you can get it now, don't wait for three years. I, I think, Rafe, one of the things that is, is a little conspiracy going around right now is the reason why these manufacturers, uh, Samsung and LG, are pushing out 55-inch OLED is because that is the display technology that Apple TV uh, is, you know, according to rumor, going to be using. Mm -hmm. So Apple is not going to release a TV, that, and Ty wrote an article about this earlier in the year, they're not going to release a TV that has mediocre picture quality. Mm -hmm. They're going to go for something that has really good picture quality. Mm -hmm. So the thinking is, if they do that, it's going to be OLED, it's going to be wow. Mm -hmm. I said when people look at OLED TVs, it is wow. You know, you're like, wow, that really, that picture really does look better than what I have at home or what I've seen before. So if you're going to, if you're Apple, you want that. Yeah. Now, one of the things we haven't talked about is something that definitely is is out ahead of the curve in terms of technology, and that is the 4K uh, display technology, which we're hearing about from a couple of vendors. Uh, what is 4K? What does that mean to the, to, to the buyer? What was that movie that came out a couple of years ago, Blade Runner? They actually re-released a digital print that was in 4K. Yeah. So it's essentially 4,000 pixels by about 2,000 pixels. Okay. Essentially, it's a cinema format. So you've got a, a lot of the digital films, a lot of 3D films are actually shown in the cinema in 4K. Yeah. So what they're trying to do is sort of shoehorn that into a consumer television for no real reason. Unless you've got a cinema-sized room in your house, you don't really need 4K. What it is useful for mm -hmm. is dividing in two so you actually get full HD uh, passive 3D technology. Yeah, that's so that's the only real reason you. So when you go it. see a movie, that a digital movie, that's mostly in that's in 4K today, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So the, the, again, it's for the big screen sizes, and like Ty said, the ability to uh, get rid of a passive TV right now is basically half resolution on 3D. So what LG told me is that they're actually you can get full HD resolution to both eyes if you're looking at this passive display uh, with 4K resolution. So that's one little selling point. But at the end of the day, these are again, uh, it's, you're not going to get any content that's 2D 4K uh, for the near future. Yeah, and I heard about um, where was it? Sharp was talking about 8K. 8K. So 8K <laughs> has, I think, about uh, the same amount of content for the consumer that is available as 4K, right. which is to say, yeah. none. Yeah. If you can get the master discs of Blade Runner, maybe you can uh, watch 4K all day. But uh. Do, would there be any uh, visual, uh, visible dis difference between 4K and 8K? Are we down to that, to what what Steve Jobs called the Retina display, where that's the limit? of our uh, resolution? It's, yeah. it's really hard to see a difference for a lot of people between 720p and 1080p. So yeah. you know, when you start talking about these resolutions that are four times, eight times as high as that, uh, it's really no payoff unless you're on a gigantic screen or sitting impossibly close to the set. Hey, we got to wrap up, but there's one thing we didn't talk about because I hate it, which is 3D. <laughs> so really briefly, the state of 3D here at CES, if people forgot about it, is it going to be back next year? What's going on with 3D? It's going to be a function. It's going yeah. to be something you have. I don't know if they have teletext here. I'm an Australian, but uh, teletext is a feature. It's just like a tick box, and yeah. 3D is going to be the same. I can see passive really taking off. Yeah. People don't want to pay extra for glasses. If you get six pairs in the, in the box, that's good. And so you can watch a 3D movie once a year, maybe. So you're going to be paying for 3D TVs anyway. Uh, but yeah, I think pa passive is the way to go. It's one of those features that just comes along with it. Yeah. All right. So for more great TV coverage, check out CNET.com. Um, and uh, stay tuned. What's coming up next? The 404 is coming up next. Ty Pendleberry from CNET. David Kassmeyer from CNET. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Rafe Needleman. See you later.